Okay, this is uh, mini recording section two of chapter 12. Uh, this is going to take us to slide 17 through 27. Um, this is going to be a brief section. Just want to go over uh, the types of non qualified deferred compensation plans. So uh, here we are. We have the basic deferred comp plans, which can be either funded or unfunded. Um, obviously, funded plans and uh, unfunded plans have a built in substantial risk of forfeiture um, because the employer might not pay it. Uh, funded plans uh, have to have some other way to have a substantial risk of forfeiture, and we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll see that uh, examples of those um, types of funded plans are secular trusts and rabbi trusts, um, and they have different types of substantial risk of forfeiture. Um, and then uh, we'll get into uh, phantom stock plans. Supplemental Executive Retirement Plans, or SERPs, uh, Salary Reduction Plans, and 401k RAP Plans. So this will take us through slide 27. So um, the a non-qualified uh, deferred compensation plan um, is a contractual arrangement between the employer, uh, typically and an executive, um, that can be anyone that you choose to target. Um, the employer promises to pay a predetermined amount um, sometime in the future. I'm going to pay you X amount in the future. Um, and so, obviously, by definition, non-qualified means that it is not qualified. Um, now, these uh, so here are some advantages um, to the employer. I get to have compensation, which incurred for the current year, I mean, is promised for the current year, um, for work done during the current year, but is not paid uh, the current year. So I get to uh, defer that savings. And because uh, I, I can add the payroll tax savings, um, I can be discriminatory. Uh, and by doing this, I can... Um, I can eventually deduct over a million dollars. I can't in the current year do it, but I can eventually deduct over a million dollars for work that was done this year. For the executive, uh, and we, we talked about these things earlier, you get to reduce taxable income, avoid payroll taxes on the appreciation. Um, unfunded plans, uh, as we talked about, um, the money is not set aside. Um, and so, um the um so if if there's money that's not set aside there can be no constructive receipt there's a built-in obvious substantial risk of forfeiture because the employer might not pay um and so the um and then also there may be some requirements to um you know, time requirements or other considerations that the executive has to meet in order to receive the funds, so the executive might not receive them. Um, so this definitely meets the requirements for tax deferral to the employee. Um, and but again, the employer does not get the tax deduction. Uh, now, for plans that are funded, um, if I'm the employee, I certainly feel feel better when funds are set aside into an irrevocable trust where the employer cannot take the money back out. Um, so, it would be, But in order for me to not have to pay taxes when the money is set aside for me on a trust, um, it has to be, uh, there has to be some sort of substantial risk of forfeiture. And so what might that be? Um, in order for there not to be constructive receipt and for me not to pay taxes. So the examples that we have here are secular trusts and rabbi trusts. First, a secular trust, a type of non-qualified deferred comp plan that is funded, money set aside in an irrevocable trust um, for the benefit of the executives. And here in the secular trust, the trends trust funds are not available to the employer or the employer's creditors. Um, 
and generally the substantial risk of forfeiture is in the form of a vesting period. The the um, the, the the executive would have to be with the company for a certain period of time in order to get those funds. So um, without the substantial risk of forfeiture, the value of the trust is taxable uh, to the executive at the time that it's funded, of course. Uh, but again, the, the name of the game is to defer compensation. In a rabbi trust, um, the you've got an irrevocable trust. The funds are set aside. Uh, funds are not available to the employer, but may be available to the employer's general creditors under bankruptcy. So that is not the case in a um, in a secular trust. Uh, so that uh, so there's not vesting like there is in, in the secular trust, but that is what gives the substantial risk of forfeiture because if the firm goes out of business uh, and files for bankruptcy, it will be those assets will be fair game subject to the creditors. That's not the case. That is not the case in qualified plans, but it is the case here in the rabbi trust, even though it's an irrevocable trust uh, set aside for uh, for the employee. And this again got the name of a rabbi trust because um, because the, uh, there was a um, a temple that uh, that set aside funds for a rabbi, uh, and even though they said, "Hey, we're going to put this fund this money here that's irrevocable," we're not going and we're not going to put uh, an irrevocable trust, and there's not going to be any um, vesting period here on it. But they said, "Hey." We still the, the rabbi still gets to defer this compensation because it's subject to the substantial risk of forfeiture under these creditors. So they won the court case on that. Okay, next type of plans: phantom stock plans, another type of non-deferred um, compensation plan. As the name implies, there's not actual stock. We're going to get into in the next recording. We're going to get into stock options uh, where there's actual shares that change hands. Here it's uh, it's shares change hands basically just on paper uh, to key executives. And what we're trying to do um, is the the executives are are still we're trying to make incentives aligned. We want the executives to want the stock value of the company to go up. So that's what uh, that's what the executives a actually get um, when the stock is valued. The executive will increase the uh, receive the increase in value as compensation. Now this is typically done uh, in non publicly traded companies, so uh, where the stocks stock has to be valued. So. Um, so this is why, uh, and and so where there, the we might not necessarily want the owners of the company might not necessarily want to dilute the ownership, uh, but they still want to give um, the um, the executives and the management team incentive to make the value of the company increase. So. That's why we have these uh, phantom stock plans. We're not actually giving shares of the company, but we are saying we're going to pay you for making the value of the company increase, and that's what 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 is available there in the phantom stock plan. In the supplemental executive retirement plan, um, there are a couple of different types. Uh, uh, I mean, these are known often as top hat or excess, not excessive, excess benefit plans. Uh, so the name implies excess benefit, supplemental. It goes on top. Sorry, my microphone just fell. Uh, it goes on top of a another type of retirement plan. 
off on, on top of the qualified plan. So um, you can uh, the employer uh, the employee cannot let's say in an excess benefit plan um, the employee can put away fifty three and the employer and employee can put away fifty three thousand dollars in a defined contribution plan. But let's say the employer and the executive make six hundred thousand dollars. This would say, okay, basically, if everybody was able to put away fifth, if you know, if we had it so that you could, there was a total of fifteen percent put away for all the employees up to two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. But that would obviously. Max out. So I do 15% of the 265. I would then do 15% of the additional 315,000, uh, and and put that in the supplemental plan for the uh, uh, for the executive. The difference between excess benefit plans and they, this won't be testable um, on, on this exam, but just for your edification, the difference between the excess benefit plans is that. Uh, and top hat plans is that top hat plans are just for a select group of key executives. Excess benefit plans uh, typically are available for a wider group of people that make above the um, what is typically includable, or who who can who could uh, contribute more to a plan than is available under the DC limits. Um, these can be either funded or unfunded types of plans. There are salary reduction plans. Uh, this is very simple, um, and this this will be often done, let's say, with bonuses, um, where they where the executive says, uh, "You're going to pay me this money. I'd rather you pay me this money later. Just give it to me later, um, because right now I've got enough, and I'm in the top." tax bracket if you give it to me in a couple of years I will get that money um, and I will be in a lower tax bracket and one of the keys is that you must elect to defer the compensation before it is earned you can't just say oh it's due to me now oh just hold off on that so uh, that's the salary reduction plan I think that's the uh, oh, the last one is the uh, 401k wrap plan which is kind of like a, uh, a supplemental plan. It allows the executive who's maximizing the 401k deferral, um, 18000 to defer additional salary into a non-qualified deferred compensation plan. So this is wrapped with the 401k. It's in conjunction. It's a combo. It's a, it's a non-qualified plan that combines with a 401k. Uh, and so there has to be, as typical, it's just typically the case in unqualified deferred comp plan, substantial risk of forfeiture exists on the non qualified side, not on the 401k side, but on the non qualified side. Okay, that is the, uh, that is the last one that we're going to uh, cover in this section. The next section we will get into uh, stock option plans.